Thank you very much for joining me. What do you make of the huge crime wave in Melbourne involving youths and young men of African descent, uh, many of them Sudanese? Well, Andrew, uh, in fact, I've been in Melbourne uh, for most of this week and uh, Jason Wood and other members uh, have brought to my attention over a period of time now the crime wave, uh, the fact people are being followed home in their cars, uh, stolen as a result of uh, break and enters and keys being stolen. Uh, it's a it's a very worrying issue, and uh, I, I think like in the last couple of years, people have seen crime wave with bikies, and the Queensland government was able to come down heavily to stamp out that crime and to deal with it. Uh, that is similarly what needs to happen in Victoria. Uh, my department's been doing some work with the Victorian police to try and identify people of poor character where we might be able to cancel visa, uh, cancel those. Uh, visas and uh, that work continues but uh, look this is a, a real concern for Victorians and I think people are rightly angered at uh, the lack of action uh, by the Andrews government. Uh, there are problems around bail laws and uh, this is what happens when you have a state government that's weak on law and order. Uh, look, you, no doubt there. The, the law and order issue is very big, lack of policing very big and I have noticed that you've thrown out or, or intend to throw out uh, some people back to uh, back to Africa, but this is reacting afterwards, and I'm just wondering. Malcolm Fraser got the Lebanese refugee program wrong, opened the door to people that his immigration minister at the time said do not. Did we make another mistake with the Sudanese refugee program? Well, Andrew, uh, I guess it's still an open question in terms of uh, uh, what percentage of the particular community, in this case the Sudanese community. Uh, is doing the wrong thing, is it at the margins, uh, given the number of people that have come in. The other interesting aspect, and we see this in the uh, foreign fighters, we end up looking at people from second and third generation. So the original people that have arrived here, that have sought refuge, for example, have done well, they've worked hard, they've educated their children, and it's a second or third generation that's going off to fight. Uh, and so we need to have a proper look at what has gone wrong and clearly something has gone wrong when you have this level of concentrated violence and gang uh, type activity it is a particular issue but I think uh, we need to put it into perspective in terms of what the rest of the community is doing by, by way of contribution uh, but we do review the program each year and if we feel that there are problems with uh, particular cohorts, uh, particular nationalities, uh, particular people who might not be integrating well, not contributing well, uh, then there are many other worthy recipients uh, who would seek to come to a country like ours and make an opportunity their own uh, to take up the educational and uh, other supports uh, opportunities that are provided to them. So look, we can we can continue to have a look at it, but I, my, my honest sense is that uh, there is a real breakdown uh, from the Andrews government in terms of their policing response. And I'm sure the police are frustrated by having one hand tied behind their back as well. Uh, because regardless of where people come from, uh, if they know that they can get away with these sorts of crimes, uh, they'll continue to perpetuate them, and uh, that's not what we want. Look, again, I couldn't disagree with you on the law and order issue and the weakness of the uh, Andrews government, but the point really is there shouldn't be, with a lot of these cases, I often ask, you know, who let them in? And they shouldn't be posing a problem in the first place. The crime rate among this community is way above the norm, police are now admitting this. I'm just wondering whether we have been factoring in, in our past refugee intakes, even in our immigration intakes, the difference that culture makes in determining whether one cohort of people is going to struggle to fit in or whether another will take to it like a duck to water. Have we done that sufficiently in the past, in your opinion? Well, clearly, Andrew, if there, if there is a particular problem uh, that people can point to uh, within a certain community, and if we're talking about a significant number of people within that community who are doing the wrong thing, uh, then clearly mistakes have been made in the past. And the reality is that Malcolm Fraser did make mistakes uh, in bringing some people in in the 1970s, and uh, we're seeing that today. And, and we need to be honest in having that discussion. There was a mistake made. And uh, if it can be demonstrated that we have a significant proportion of uh, a particular community, we're talking about the Sudanese community in this instance, uh, then we need to work out what's gone wrong. If a culture is imported 
and the children from that culture that, that then are born here or raised here turn out to be disproportionately having strugg you know, struggling to feel, fit in, is it a mistake to bring their parents in? Is it a mistake in your view? Do we run a risk in your view bringing in 12,000 people from Syria and Iraq when so many others from that part of the world have struggled to fit in? Well, Andrew, I've been very, uh, very definite about this, and uh, the Labor Party's criticised me for the slow pace at which we've brought people in because we're conducting these security checks in concert with the United States. And uh, the first priority is to make sure that we're not bringing people uh, who would pose a threat here and now. And uh, that's a, a real issue to deal with because people are coming out of a war-torn country, out of an area in conflict uh, for uh, many, many years. And we don't want them delivering their troubles onto our shores. So that's the first priority, is to screen those people out that we believe uh, wouldn't be contributing to Australian society, in fact, may detract from it through their actions. Uh, so we've been very specific about wanting to target people, uh, families. Uh, we don't want men of fighting age. And we've been very, very definite, uh, and Prime Minister Turnbull's been very definite about this uh, as well. That is that we don't want uh, to bring people in that are going to cause harm. We are targeting persecuted minorities and a very high proportion within that uh, 12,000 will be people that have uh, you know, a lot to fear because of their Christianity, because of their beliefs. Uh, they have a lot to fear from ISIL and from, uh, in many cases, uh, elements of the Assad regime.